You know somebody named Daniel? You know somebody named Daniel? No? I thought your hand was up. David. What's that? David and the king. David and the king. No? Daniel. You know somebody named Daniel? You know somebody named Daniel? Any of you guys know somebody named Daniel? All right. The name Daniel came out of the Bible. Daniel was a prophet of God. And if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 4. I don't have a Bible. You don't have a Bible. Now there are a lot of cool stories in the book of Daniel. God did a lot of things with Daniel. And uh, Daniel showed the power of God in the things that he did and showed the power of God in the things that he... Well, let, me, let me ask you this. Has anybody ever been thrown into a den of lions? Hungry lions. What do you think would happen, Xander, if you got thrown into a den of hungry lions? They would have a Xander sandwich. You ever hear of pulled pork? Well, this is pulled Xander. This is pulled Xander. Did you have your hand up or are you just wiping? You know, right? Hungry lions would tear you apart, wouldn't they? Right? Not Daniel. Why? Because God's protection. Now, Daniel had three friends that we learned about on the last lesson, which was, what, two weeks ago? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What happened to them? Do you remember? They put in a fiery furnace. Anything else, Dad? They were saved. They put, I saw a hand over here. Did somebody else have a hand up? No? Right. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, was the king. I just gave you the answer to that. I'm going to ask you a question later on. And he said, if if anybody doesn't worship me, you're going to get thrown into a fiery furnace. And the three friends of Daniel said, we're not going to worship you, king. We worship God, and we only worship God. And that's, God is pleased with that. God wants our worship, and our worship uh, only goes to God. We are only to worship God. We don't worship anything else. We don't worship fame. We don't worship uh, what I like to call the great green God. Does anybody know what the great green God is? Uh, no, well, actually, that's becoming a great green God, too. This is what I call the great green God. And a lot of people worship this. They'll do, they will do it. No, not George Washington. The dollar bill. They'll do whatever they can to earn money, to get money, even if it means stealing from other people. God is not pleased with that. God says that we worship Him and we worship Him alone. Now, Daniel, I'm sorry? It is. You will have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment in the whole Bible. Yep. No other gods. And no idols. Right. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was a powerful... Who was Nebuchadnezzar? Anybody want to guess who was Nebuchadnezzar? What, what was his? Uh, somebody said over here. Who, who said it? Who said it? the king? Right. That was. Now listen. If one of you guys went up to President Biden and said, "President Biden, I heard what you said about this, and I think you're wrong," would you get thrown in jail for that? Oh. Nope. If you had gone up uh, a couple years ago and said, President Trump, I heard you, I heard you say this and I think you're wrong. Do you think you'd go to jail for that? Yeah. Nope. Because we have something in this country we call freedom of speech. You're allowed to disagree with rulers. You're allowed to. But in the king's time, back then, you didn't disagree with the king. Because if you disagreed with the king, not only forget about getting thrown in jail, they'd kill you. They'd take your head off. 
if you disagree with the king. But Daniel, because Daniel believed in God, Daniel said, I have a king that is more powerful than you, King Nebuchadnezzar. I have a king that's even more powerful. And so Daniel was not afraid to stand up for what was right. No matter who the king was, he didn't care because the God that he served was more powerful. And Nebuchadnezzar respected Daniel because he knew that Daniel would always tell him the truth. People will respect you when you tell the truth. When you decide that you're going to serve God and not be afraid of anybody else, now, that, does that mean you get disrespectful with them? No. Daniel was never disrespectful to the king. But he said, King Nebuchadnezzar, you're not right about this. So here's what happened. <clears throat> and this is, this is kind of an odd chapter in the Bible because this was not written by anybody who was Jewish. It was not written by somebody from Israel. It was written by Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar said here, it says, Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the most high God has worked for me. And then he goes on, and Nebuchadnezzar the king gives praise to God. He said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was in, at rest in my house, <clears throat> excuse me, and flourishing in my palace. In other words, things were good for me. I was just, I was just chilling. I was just chilling in my crib. Don't look at me like that. It hurts me when you look like that. It really hurts. I was sitting in my house. I was just relaxing. Things were going good for me. I was in my palace. And I saw a dream that made me afraid. The thoughts on my bed and the visions that troubled me. So I issued a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then all the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers came in, and I told them the dream, and they were not able to make known to me its interpretation. Huh? Magicians? False. Soothsayers? False. Astrologers? False. The Chaldeans, the, these were the, the people that practiced, uh, I don't know, I guess they practiced magic or something like that, or, or maybe they were uh, psychics. False. All these people that claim to have powers, unless the power comes from God, it's false. They're just playing with you. They're, they're trying to take advantage of you. They're telling you lies. But what happened is that the king brings all these people in. And they can't tell him what the dream means. He told them what the dream was. And they couldn't tell what the dream meant. And finally he said, call Daniel. Daniel has been known to have interpretations of dreams. And so the king told him the dream. He said, this is, these were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking, and behold, a tree in the middle of the earth, and its height was great, and the tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens and could be seen to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds in the, of the heavens dwelt in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. And I saw in the visions of my head while in my bed there was a watcher a holy one coming down from heaven he cried aloud and said this chop down the tree and cut off its branches strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches nevertheless leave the stump and the roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him get uh, grazed with the beasts and on the grass of the earth let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the watchers 
and the sense by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men gives it to whoever he will and sets it over the lower of men the lowest of men rather this is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had and he, when he told it to Daniel Daniel thought and God began to reveal to Daniel what the dream meant and it troubled him it made him real sad He's going around. Oh, this is awful. This is awful. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Can you tell me what the dream meant? Daniel said, I wish this dream was to your enemies. But Nebuchadnezzar, that big tree that you saw was you. You are a powerful king. Let me read to you what Daniel said here. He said, the tree that you saw which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home. It is you, O king, who have become grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation. O king, this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling will be with the beasts of the field, and they will make you eat grass like the oxen. They'll wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times will pass over you until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men, in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. But inasmuch as they gave command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom will be assured to you after you know, come to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, and this is Daniel's advice to the king. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. In other words, what Daniel is telling the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he says that vision that you saw was you. And you are going to be driven from men, and you're going to live out in the fields, and you're going to eat grass, and you're going to get all wet with the dew and the rain, and till seven years, until you finally understand that God is the great God. You see, because Nebuchadnezzar had a problem with pride. He had a problem with pride. He was a great and mighty king. He was very wealthy. When he, if he said, Eric. I don't like you, you're done. You know what would happen? People would come in and kill you just because the king doesn't like you. Anthony, I don't like you. Bye, Anthony. Bye-bye. You'd be dead. If the king, Kaya, if the king wanted you dead, you were dead. If the king... Sophia, if the king wanted you to go move over here, give up your home and go move over here, guess what? You did what the king said. You didn't have a choice. Because if you protested, if you said, no, I don't want to do that, gone. That's the kind of power that the king had. Thank the Lord we don't have that power in the United States. You can say, no, I don't want to do that. I have rights. Back then, you don't have rights. You didn't have any rights. You, your only right was to do what the king told you to do. But you see, having that kind of power makes people corrupt. It gives people a big head, is what we like to say. In other words, they think, well, hey, I'm powerful. I, I can do anything I want. There's nobody above me. Wrong. Daniel said, king, you're wrong. King, you're wrong. There is always somebody above you, and his name is God. God Almighty. 
Now, King Nebuchadnezzar was not a, he was not a dumb man. He was a very smart man. He didn't get to be king by being dumb. And he started doing what Daniel told him to do. But you see, when pride is in your heart, when sin is in your heart, pretty soon it's going to come through. You may try everything that you can to keep it down, but it's going to come through. One day he's walking in his palace and went up to the roof. And he looked out over the city of Babylon. Now, Babylon back then was a beautiful city. It's not so beautiful today. I'm sorry? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. It, it's not such a beautiful city today, but back then it was a beautiful city. They had these gardens. They called the Hanging Gardens. And they were beautiful. They were. We consider them one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And he looked out over all that. And all that, all that was stuff that he said, let's do. And he said, oh, look at Babylon. Haven't I built all this for my glory? Haven't I built all this to make me look good? I am the greatest. And there's nobody else like me. And all of a sudden, word came from heaven. Those things that you heard in your dream are going to happen to you. And immediately, his mind was changed. A mental illness came over him. This is a real thing. There's a real mental illness out there that when people think that they're, they think they're an animal. And they live like animals. And they go out and they, they act like animals because they think in their mind that they're an animal. And God struck him with that mental illness. And he thought that he was an animal. And he left the palace and he went out and he started eating grass in the field. And he did that for seven years. Now, I'm looking around. You were a baby seven years ago. You probably weren't born seven years ago, right? You're what, five or six? Five. Yep, so you aren't even seven years old. You were just a little tight seven years ago. How old are you now, eight? So yeah, you were a baby. You probably weren't, you're not seven, are you? You're what, six? You're eight? Oh my goodness. Okay, so you were a little baby. You look a lot younger. Now, you, I know you're younger than seven, right? Yeah. He's younger than seven. He's younger than seven. You were just a kid. You were, yeah, you were like his age. You weren't born yet. You were like one of these guys. You are as old as Anaya. You weren't born yet. You are probably, what, about two? Nine. You're nine now, so yeah, you would have been two years old back then. You would have been four. You would have been four. And you were a newborn. That's a long time. That's a long, long time. But you know, for seven years, his kingdom was secure. People watched out for his kingdom. He was probably, now, let me, let me tell you this, that this is not in the Bible. This is my thought. This is David. This is my thought. It was probably Daniel that had a hand in making sure that his kingdom was secure. Because if a king all of a sudden went out and started acting like an animal, you know what usually would happen? Other people would come in and they'd take over the kingdom and they'd go find the old king and they'd have him killed. But my kingdom now. But his kingdom was secure for seven years. And after seven years, all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar's mind came back to him right. And he realized, you know what? I was wrong. God is supreme. God rules over everything. I am not the great king. God is the great king and I serve him. We have some problem with this today. Do you have pride in your heart that you think you're some great thing? Because if you do, you're in for a rude awakening. You are not in charge. God is. You are even though you might think that you control your own life, 
It's not true. God controls your life. I can tell you that just from things that have happened to me recently. One morning, my stepdaughter Elizabeth and I were coming to church. And we were right out here at I-10 and Baseline. And our light turned green and I started going through the light and all of a sudden I looked and some guy was about to run the red light. And I tromped on it. I, I stepped on the gas to get out of his way. And he hit the brakes and it started... <laughs> Fortunately, he came to a stop because I don't think I could have got out of his way. Now the other day, the, it was the first day of uh, VBS. I was leaving work. I was coming here to teach the lesson. And all of a sudden, I left work and I get out onto the street and a guy turns starts to turn left right in front of me and I hit the brake. <laughs> Fortunately, he saw me and he stopped and I got through. You see, I might think that I'm a, uh, as pastor likes to say, I'm a big whooper whopper. That's his favorite word. He likes that word, whooper whopper. That's Hoosier talk. That's, that's talk from people in Indiana, isn't it, honey? Sure is. That's, she's from Indiana. She's a Hoosier. That's how Hoosiers talk. And Pastor, Pastor likes to call them big whooper whoppers. And I think I'm the greatest. I am the greatest. There's nobody like me. Newsflash, you're not. You're not. No matter how great you are. No matter how wonderful a person you are. God is still greater than you are. Always remember that in your life. Always remember that we exist to make God happy. We exist to serve God. And when we do God's will, when we obey God, it makes Him happy. And then He'll use us to do great things. But we have to submit ourselves to God first. Always remember that you're not the greatest. God is. No matter how great things you do, God is still the greatest. Did you know... Has anybody heard about a guy who blasted off into space recently? Some guy just blasted off into space a couple weeks ago in a rocket that he had built. He had it built. He didn't build it himself. But he, his company had it built. He's the guy that's the head of Amazon. And he went up into space with a bunch of his rich friends. And they came back down safely. And everybody's saying, oh, what a great guy. What a great guy. It doesn't matter. You know what? If God had, if God had not protected him, that rocket could have gone boom. You see, when I was a young man, that actually happened. People blasted off at a rocket, and about a minute later, the rocket went boom. And seven people died. You see, we don't have control over what happens to us, but God does. And God watches out for you. God is always watching out for you. He loves you, and He'll protect you. Nebuchadnezzar paid a price for his pride. That's what it's called. When we start to think that we're some big thing, we're some big old whooper whopper, that's called pride. God doesn't like pride. In fact, the Bible says that pride goes before the fall. Let me tell you a quick funny story, and we'll end here. We were doing the uh, we were doing the food for life yesterday, and your grandfather Jimmy was uh, he was starting to carry some boxes. I said, Jimmy, you don't need to do that. Here, put it on this hand truck, and I put a box on there. I said, I I like to work smarter, not harder. You know, I went to pull the uh, I went to pull the hand truck so I could move it, and the box fell off the front, and everything fell out of the box. Old Jimmy, he's laughing at me. He saw it happen. He was laughing at me. He thought that was funny. Dave, you thought you were some big thing, but God made sure to to prove that I was not. I'm not as smart as I think I am, but I know this. But when I obey God, when I serve God, He makes me pretty smart. All right, it's shut up time here. My alarm didn't go off because I think I forgot to set up. I think I forgot to turn it on. Back on. I got a question. Question, real quick. Um, I saw a guy who was circling around in the street. 
so proud that we think that we are it because we are not we're only what you make us Lord may we uh, may we understand that we are to serve you all the days of our lives Lord everything that we do may may it be done to please you and not to please us because Lord that we know that when we please you then you will make up you will uh, promote us to honor as long as we continue to give the glory to you. Now, Father, as as, uh, as we have our snack, I thank you for it, Lord, and I pray your blessings upon it. And Lord, I pray your blessings upon each child that is here today. And may they all go away from this place having learned more. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.